the trial of a Catholic pro-democracy advocate in Hong Kong. Jimmy Lai faces a possible life sentence if convicted. The media tycoon faces life imprisonment on charges he colluded with foreign forces including the United States. Originally arrested in 2020, accused of undermining the territory's national security through articles published in his Apple Daily newspaper. Now where the trial has begun for media mogul and pro-democracy activist Jimmy Lai. Jimmy Lai, the media tycoon who founded the most popular Chinese language newspaper in Hong Kong, has become a symbol of the fight to preserve press freedom as Beijing tightens its grip on the former British colony. In prison since December 2020, this vocal critic of the Chinese government and supporter of democracy is now facing charges that could potentially result in a life sentence. Today, March 25, 2024, marks the 52nd day of the trial against Jimmy Lai, where he faces betrayal by former colleagues, Apple Daily's executives, and the very people he supported for the cause of fighting for democracy. You're listening to The Divide, where we look into the factors that set us apart as human beings, including whether one can maintain their conscience under extreme pressure, and what drives people to sacrifice their personal interests for a greater good. Through the breakdown of the trial against Jimmy Lai and Apple Daily in Hong Kong. Well, personally, I don't believe it's possible to have a fair trial in Hong Kong at this point. Yeah, I'm, I'm Steve Butler. I uh, was the uh, Asia Program Coordinator at the Committee to Protect Journalists. On that trip to Hong Kong, I was doing research for a report on the history of press freedom and the prospects for press freedom in Hong Kong. And of course, in that context, Jimmy Lai is a very important person. And he was the one whose uh, newspaper, uh, the Apple Daily, was outspoken in criticism uh, of the Communist Party in China and also of the, the lack of freedom, lack of complete freedom for the people of Hong Kong. I say lack of complete freedom. Of course, the Hong Kong people enjoyed tremendous rights of freedom of speech for many, many years. And, but there was really only a fledgling kind of uh, democratic system. They, didn't, they never enjoyed anything like uh, full democracy, even though uh, they were able to vote for uh, the Legislative Council. Steve Butler, who traveled to Hong Kong in 2019 to interview Jimmy Lai and document the decline of press freedom in the city, shares his thoughts on how he believes the trial will unfold and its implications. I mean, this is actually one of the I mean, business people who I know in Hong Kong. Years, some years ago, were saying that was the last bastion of hope for Hong Kong, to have the independent judiciary. Uh, and once the, the independent judiciary succumbs to pressure from China, uh, it will become very difficult uh, uh, to conduct business. So, I mean, how is the trial of Jimmy Lai going to play out? It's very di difficult to imagine that uh, there can be a fair trial. He's being charged for offenses that occurred prior to the enactment of these laws. I mean, that's that's just one one aspect of it. Um, and the kinds of activities that uh, we might have considered perfectly normal previously have suddenly become offenses under the law. I mean, for example, it's true that Jimmy, Jimmy Lai did travel to the United States and he, he consulted, uh, he met the vice president, he met the secretary of state, uh, and obviously you know, he was welcoming of pressure to f promote democracy in Hong Kong. And that suddenly has become an offense. So it's, it's very difficult to imagine a fair outcome of the trial. Let's put it that way. Steve Vines, British journalist, writer, and broadcaster who lived and worked in Hong Kong from 1987 until 2021, is following the trial closely. It's quite interesting in the trial, the, the, which, of Jimmy Lai, which is going on as we speak, the prosecution keeps saying, oh, the paper reported this in a favorable manner, manner the paper reported that in a, a favorable manner. It's all true. I mean, nobody denies that Apple Daily was a democracy-supporting newspaper. 
and it took a stance. Uh, incidentally, <laughs> I've been around newspapers for a long time. Most newspapers take a stance, actually. This isn't uncommon. With regular journalistic work being framed as a crime against national security, I asked Vines how he would describe the trial. Well, the trial is is, and I say this with enormous regret. The the, the trial is under the national security law, which is a draconian law which essentially、um, suppresses freedom of expression. It it is increasingly coming to resemble. The type of trial that you would think、uh, occurs on the Chinese mainland. The difference being that on the Chinese mainland, these political trials are very brief, and they don't really bother with the loss of evidence. In this trial, the government has intimidated、uh, other people under arrest from Apple Daily to give evidence against their former boss. This is something which is very common again. On the mainland, is having defendants giving evidence against each other, and it what I think is so surprising, and I didn't think I'd be surprised by anything in 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 this trial, but I am surprised by the level at which the prosecution is seeking to find normal journalistic practice, i.e., securing interviews, con- talking to people, covering events, as being somehow unlawful. You know, they, they they expressed great surprise. For example, that that、um, the newspaper Apple Daily tried to get the、uh, make contact with the former governor of Hong Kong, Chris Patton, as though this was somehow a sinister thing. You know, in my experience, finding people to be interviewed is not exceptional. It, it, it's routine, but all of these things have now been apparently made unlawful. And here's Mark Simon, Jimmy Lai's deputy and trusted confidant. I think the trial is meaningless.、Um, I, I have this sense in Beijing that when they say we're going to put him on trial, I see a guy who says, "Whatever, just do it, get it over with." You know, why is this taking so long?、Um, Hong Kong is taken, and there's a lesson for the Taiwanese in here. I, I I think Taiwan should watch this very closely. Taiwanese people should watch this very closely. At every point in time, they could have found a way to get rid of Jimmy and still shut down Apple Daily. Jimmy's a British citizen. He goes out. They decide they're not going to let him back in. He can sit in London all day long and sue to come back in. Feel free. He can have courts represent him. But if they don't let you on the airplane, and they tell you if you come back, if you actually do get back in, we're going to arrest you and put you in jail, then. I think they could have solved it that way, and it would have been smarter too, because they'd be basically they kicked him out and then they took his newspaper. He's still free, and he's still a very wealthy, wealthy man. And there's not a lot of sympathy for wealthy, wealthy people. It's like, well, you rolled the. That's the attitude you get sometimes. You rolled the dice. They have with Jimmy Lai now. A situation where everybody knows he's going to be convicted. He's been convicted on the most ridiculous charges already, so the the next next conviction is very easy. What they are doing now is they are telling a story. They have to have a story. That's why this is really a uniquely communist prosecution. The story is Jimmy Lai, the mastermind, with his connections to the West and his other ideas, is there to harm China. So as part of that, they got to tell you that he hates China. So they've got to connect him up with all these white guys. It's a very racial campaign. People don't really understand. It really is.、Um, it's a very racial campaign because what you hear is blah 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 blah. Jack Keane, a famous general, blah blah blah. Paul Wolfowitz,、uh, you know, an American diplomat, blah blah blah. Lord Patton, the former governor, blah blah blah. Luke de Pulford, blah blah blah. Mark Simon, Mark Simon, Mark Simon. It's like white guys, traitor to China, traitor to his race. That's an incredibly important part of their prosecution. It's an incredibly racial prosecution. I'm not kidding you. You know, they they basically made. I was watching it the other night just to make sure I had it. And I, it is the the, the 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 what they're doing to Jimmy is basically saying you associate with the West, you're bad, you have Western ideas, you're out to hurt China, you're a bad Chinese. That's what they're saying about him, and what they're going to do is continue to tell that narrative. 
that he's there to hurt China. It seems as though everyone already knows how this trial will play out, and nobody expects the trial to be fair. Well, it's it's very interesting. The um, the the Chinese Communist Party and and the people who are under their control in the Hong Kong government have a practice of saying that if you have a protest movement, the only explanation why it has been successful is because foreign forces are behind it. They don't have any confidence in the people themselves to have organised a protest movement. So what the trial is trying to prove is that somehow Jimmy Lai uh, was um, motivated by the Americans or by the British or goodness knows who to do what he did. I mean, I happen to know Jimmy Lai quite well. He's a very independently minded person. The idea that he needed to go to Washington to find out what his views were is is quite extraordinary to me. But it's quite true. He did go to Washington. He did go to other places overseas to gain support for the democracy movement. But that's different from them instigating the coverage that Daily、uh, that Apple Daily. Maintained in the paper, and it's different from suggesting that it was some kind of plot. You know, the idea that everything is a conspiracy, everything is a plot, when the evidence is there, you cannot possibly have, as you had in Hong Kong during the protests in 2019, you can't possibly have two million people out of a population of just over seven million on the streets protesting because they were agents of a foreign power. They were Hong Kongers, and they were there on their own initiative. Apart from painting a newspaper entrepreneur as a national traitor, there's something else that caught my attention. Let me play it again for you. In this trial, the government has intimidated other people under arrest from Apple Daily to give evidence against their former boss. This is something which is very common again. On the mainland, is having defendants、um, giving evidence against each other. Six former staff of Hong Kong's now defunct pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily pleaded guilty on Tuesday to conspiracy to commit collusion with foreign forces in one of the former British colony's biggest national security cases. They pleaded guilty to conspiring with media tycoon Jimmy Lai and others to request a foreign country or organization to impose sanctions or blockade or engage in other hostile activities against the Hong Kong and Chinese governments between July 2020 and June 2021. After pleading guilty to the charge, publisher Chong Kim Hong, associate publisher Chan Poi Man, editor in chief Ryan Law, executive editor in chief La Man Chung. And editorial writers Fong Wei Gong and Yang Chingqi have all decided to become prosecution witnesses and testify against their former boss Jimmy Lai. One of the witnesses, the ex-publisher of Apple Daily Chung Kim Hong, confirmed in court that he was visited by a sergeant while in detention a week after the most recent rejection of his bail application. While Chung Kim Hong denied that he had been influenced by the sergeant to testify against Lai, his lawyer sent a letter to the Department of Justice stating that their client was willing to serve as a prosecution witness and inquiring whether the charges against him could be dropped. Here's Steve Vines helping me to understand the insurmountable pressure the witnesses are facing. Unfortunately, the fact of the matter is that Hong Kong now has mainland Chinese-style justice, which means that if you appear in a court of law on a political charge, you are deemed to be guilty. The only question is how guilty? How long will you serve in jail? So the deal that I assume has been reached with the people who are testifying against him is that that the judge will take their testimony. Into account and gives them more lenient sentences. More sinister behind this is the fact, and this is unfortunately quite well known, is the pressure that the authorities have been putting on the families of those who are in jail. So this means that the families go to their relatives who are in prison and say, "Look, you know, we're worried about what will happen to our children. We're worried about." The things that that have been threatened against us. Can you please cooperate 
with um, the government in testifying against Jimmy Lai. And, you, you, you know, it's very hard to be critical of people who succumb to this kind of pressure because it's enormous pressure. And it is, very, you know, a lot of people say, well, look, I can cope with jail. Well, I say this lightly. I mean, it's, it's a difficult thing. But they say, I can cope with being in jail but I can't cope with the damage it's doing to my family, particularly to my children. And this is the kind of pressure that they're under. It's, it's unbearable. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, Alice Jill Edwards, has written to authorities in China to address claims that the evidence of a listed key prosecution witness in the trial of Jimmy Lai has been obtained through torture. Edwards wrote, I'm deeply concerned that evidence that is expected to be presented against Jimmy Lai imminently may have been obtained as a result of torture or other unlawful treatment. Here's Vines. What happens in Hong Kong jails is a very closely guarded secret. What, what we do know for a fact is that even people accused of political offences who are on remand, in other words, they haven't been proven guilty of anything, they're just on remand for literally years at a time, have, for example, been um, confined, as Jimmy has for a very long time, to solitary confinement, which is illegal under international law. We know that um, they've been deprived of all sorts of rights that should exist for prisoners in Hong Kong. There is a growing body of evidence, much of it not so far published, because it involves people in jail and the fear is that they'll get even worse treatment if it is brought to light. But there is a growing body of evidence of actual torture. And that's something which is extremely worrying. As concerns grow about the possible use of torture to obtain so-called evidence, here's Mark Simon on his colleague, who he once considered a friend, testifying against their boss, Jimmy Lai. I think it will come out that Kim Hung was mistreated early on. Uh, Kim Hung's health is not the greatest in the world. Sometimes people break. That's how I feel. They break you. Kim Hung was broken. You can see when I read the testimony in Ming Pao or the other things, you know, when you read those, the man was broken. So it's, it's, it's really hard. Kim Hung gave in. He's obviously walking. When you watch his testimony, he's trying to be clever. He doesn't want to completely sell out his soul, but he's there. But he was, he's lying. I know specific examples when he's lying. My favorite is the student subscription service when they're talking about that. We're doing that to undermine the people. And I'm like, that was my program. I came up with that. But so my point is, I watch Kim Hong and I see somebody who's been broken. There are people that I have less time for. Kim Hung, I happen to know, and after talking to people and seeing people, Kim Hung was broken. After listening to Steve Vines and Mark Simon, I begin to wonder how would I react if I were one of the Apple Daily's executives, charged and imprisoned, and forced to turn against my own boss, who I know is doing the right thing for a good cause defending freedom of the press, and supporting democracy. People face a personal choice. Jimmy Lai has cultivated extremely loyal individuals who work for him and his family. But people who worked in the Apple Daily, they, they face a choice. How long do they want to spend in jail? I mean, seriously, this is what it, this is what it comes down to. If they're giving evidence against Jimmy Lai, Maybe they're just, you know, talking about the factual information about what Jimmy Lai did, which has suddenly become an offense. I mean, I would be very interested to hear what Jimmy Lai has to say about this. Is he in a position of wanting to forgive his former colleagues who have appear to have turned against him? You're listening to The Divide. This episode is produced by me, Iris Shi. Next week, we will hear more about whether Jimmy would forgive his former colleagues who are testifying against him, and what the world is doing to advocate for his release.